In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how it is that you can calculate the free cash flow yield of any particular company and most importantly, why this metric matters and how it is that you can use it to find good investment opportunities. And if you stay until the end of the video, I'm also going to show you how it is that you can retrieve this metric automatic for a list of companies all at once so that you can spot investment opportunities faster. Okay, so calculating the free cash flow yield of any particular company is very simple. As you can see, the formula is right here. And all you need to do is to take the free cash flow of a particular company and then divide it by the company's market capitalization. Now, what does that mean? Let me show you step by step. So first things first, we need to get the financial statements of a particular company. In this case, I'm going to use the Y sheets tool to be able to do that. And we're going to do it for Apple. Uh, but we want to do is to get the quarterly data and you will see why in a second and as you can see now we're going to be able to get all of the financial statements and key metrics on a historical basis and we're focused on a couple very key numbers before we do the calculation we need to understand what the free cash flow of a particular company is so if you look at the income statement the income statement is such a valuable tool because it allows you to see how much revenue the company is making and then based on that revenue you you have a whole bunch of expenses that the company has to pay off and then at the end we have what we call profit or the net income the issue with the net income and the reason why free cash flow is often used for key metrics as opposed to net income is that there are many expenses out here that are not actually paid out by the company so for example the depreciation and amortization expense reported here by apple is not that the company actually has to pay that money to to somebody uh, or as an expense but something that in technical terms the company should save so that it could replace certain equipment and different tools that they may use to produce apple products however it's not really a cash expense so what people in the finance world came up is like you know what net income is great but i want to get the actual free cash flow of a company i want to know how much real money a company has on its hands that they can then use to invest or give back to the shareholders and so to analyze this free cash flow or this real cash the cash flow statement came to be and the cash flow statement basically takes the net income and adds all of the different expenses or subtracts that either added to the cash or subtracted the cash and at the end of that figure uh, after you take the net income and then make all these additions or subtractions that you have the net cash provided by the operating activities once you have a number this is the the real cash that the company generated just from its regular activities and then you need to take into account okay now we have this cash let's subtract all the investments that we make or that we that we made over a particular period of time and that is found right here this is the capital expenditures so this is the amount of money that apple invested into many different initiatives that they have going on and so eventually the formula for free cash flow you can see it right here because Becomes really simple you take the operating cash flow minus the capital expenditures and this gives you the free cash flow that you can see right here and this is the number that you then use to look at the free cash flow yield now as you can see on the other side of the formula we have the market capitalization the market capitalization is a very simple number it basically tells you how much a company is currently worth and the way that this is calculated is by taking the existing share price of a company so let's say that apple right now it's trading at $168 per share i'm just making this number up and there's 1 million shares so in this case we have 1 million so the market capitalization if this were the actual numbers which they're not uh, full disclosure uh, would be this so the price per share times the number of shares this would give you how much money in this case this company would be worth so that is how the market capitalization is obtained with this information now we can calculate the free cash flow yield so the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the free cash flow on a ttm basis this is why we decided to get the financial statements on a quarterly basis because it becomes much easier to calculate the ttm free cash flow ttm essentially means the last four quarters 
in order to get the TTM free cash flow, we just have to take the sum of these numbers right here. So we would just do sum and then we just take one, two, three, four. Here are the four quarters. And now we have the free cash flow. The reason why you take the TTM uh, free cash flow is because a company's fiscal year can change. But if you take the last four quarters, this tells you basically the last year of results. And this allows you to more easily compare this number with other companies as well. So as you can see, now we have the free cash flow on a TTM basis. What we need to do next to calculate the free cash flow yield is to get the market capitalization, otherwise known as the market cap. And so for that, I'm going to be using Y Sheets formula. So in this case, we're going to enter Apple and we're looking to get the market cap. This is going to give us the market cap right now at the time that I'm recording this video. And then the free cash flow yield is very very simple to calculate so we first want to expand this so that we can see this number better so we take the free cash flow and then we just divide it by the market cap and as you can see we get the number right here this is typically expressed as a percentage you might be thinking okay great now i know how to calculate the free cash flow yield but how does this actually help me as an investor and the answer is very simple this number essentially tells you for every dollar that you invest into a particular company back how much is the company generating in free cash flow so let's say that we decide to invest one dollar in apple stock right now so we have one dollar right here how much free cash flow is the company going to generate for that one dollar that we've invested into the company the answer is simple you take that number so the one dollar that you can see right here times the free cash flow yield and in this case this is how much the company is generating in terms of free cash flow so for every one dollar the company is generating about three cents of free cash flow which is not bad at all and this is very helpful to know how much you're really paying for particular company so in order to explain that further in simple terms what you want to do as an investor is pay the least amount of possible money for a company and get the most amount of benefits for that money that you invest and that benefit could be revenue could be free cash flow could be many other metrics in this case that would be free cash flow ideally what you want is a company that has a high free cash flow yield but generally what you need to know is that companies that have a great future and great outlook generally have have a lower free cash flow yield and that is because they're seen as less risky companies that have more risk involved and that are likely to have issues or are already having issues uh, right now they tend to have a much higher free cash flow yield because people are taking into account the level of risk that you're taking so generally the more risk that you take into a particular investment the more free cash flow yield you will find the lower the risk the lower the free cash flow yield that you will be able to find this company's at. So then the question becomes what's a good free cash flow yield for a particular company? And this is where the bonus of this video comes into place. What I have right now, as you can see, is a list of semiconductor companies. And the answer to the question that I just posed is it really depends on the industry that you're analyzing. So in this case, we're analyzing the semiconductor industry, which have a different level of free cash flow yield numbers. But one of the best ways to use this metric is to get it for all the different companies that are part of the industry and compare it against them. So that way you can see if a particular company has a high free cash flow yield and it's better than another one, it could represent an attractive investment opportunity. So let's get the data and let's put this into action. So in this case, we want the free cash flow yield and we're gonna get it on a TTM basis. And in this case, we're gonna be using the Y sheet screener to be able to get the data real quick so we select the list of companies just be sure to use the yahoo finance sticker system we select the list of parameters that we want to get if you click on our page you will see what data is available click on get data and now we see all the numbers now don't be scared <laughs> this is not the wrong data or anything like that this is just due to the formatting so we're going to turn it into a percentage add a couple more decimal points and there we go now we have the free cash flow yield along with a whole bunch of different metrics for all this 
these different companies and now we can really compare them so as you can see right now there's some companies that have a very high yield right now but i don't know much about this company but it strikes me of a company that has lower quality than all the other companies in the list so that's probably why it has such a high yield and as you can see some of the companies that have the highest quality for example nvidia have a very very low yield this could also mean that the company is overvalued but this is just one indicator we do have to do more research to be able to come to that conclusion and this is just a, a good way of being able to compare all the companies at once one of the things that i like to do is to apply a filter right here and once you have a filter you can sort and be like show me the companies that have the lowest or show me the companies that have the highest it's up to you what you do with the information after but this is just a really cool way to be able to compare a whole bunch of companies all at once if you've enjoyed this video i would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel it really helps us to be able to reach more people and help them make good investment decisions and i'll see you in the next video